Hey there, and thank you for joining me on the Retro Game Couch. Today we're taking a look at a device called Super Wildcard. And this is a peripheral for the Super Nintendo. And it lets you create backups of your original Super Nintendo games. And the interesting part is that it creates those backups on three and a half inch floppy disks. So we're gonna take a look at this device right now. So let's go. So the device is made by Front Far East, a company from Taiwan, and this model is called the SMS3201. It has the built-in 3.5 inch floppy drive. It has uh, a serial port. I presume that is for connecting it to a PC or an Amiga or whatever you're using. And this is a, a cartridge port which can uh, function as a pass-through port. Uh, and it's also used to make backups from original games, which we're going to try as well. So let me plug this into my Super Nintendo right now. Okay, I just inserted the Super Wildcard into my Super Nintendo and turned it on. And this is the screen that I get, but I see there is an icon missing. And that is probably because I have not yet inserted a cartridge. So I'm going to do that right now and reboot my Super Nintendo. So the first icon is to play backup games from floppies and it's also to restore and save memory for games that support um, save games. Um, so that's the first one. Let me show you. It's play game, restore memory and backup memory. The second one lets you uh, format floppy disks. Um, you can also remove single files, rename single files. Um, you can copy files and copy entire disks. Uh, this one is uh, a password um, system, just like the Game Genie, and um, it supposedly works the same. I haven't really checked this out, but it supposedly supports this as well. And the last one is to actually make a backup of, a, of an original game cartridge. And we're gonna try that as well. But first, let's try to play a backup. So the device came with a box filled with backup games and um, I've made a small selection of games that I really want to check out. The first one being Pinball Dreams. At least that's what the logo says. So let's try that. I've inserted the game into the Super Wildcard and I'm going to choose option one and then play game. Let me see. Yes, it reads the disk. It sees one file on the disk. And we're going to load that now. The manual says that loading of a single disk uh, will take about 25 seconds. So I'll par probably make a small cut here. So the backup is now loaded and it gives you the option to play the game in normal mode or in memory mode. And memory mode gives you some cheats. You can uh, choose uh, slow motion and stuff like that. Uh, some games are not compatible with memory mode. Other games only work with memory mode. So I'm not really sure. I'm going to go for normal mode. And this seems to actually work. So this is Pinball. Pinball Dreams. And this pretty much sounds like I remember it on PC. These sound like actual samples. Nice. Okay, I'm going to choose one of the four pinball machines. Let's go from Nightmare. Okay. Not really sure which button to press. Here we go. So let me find out. Okay. That's the controls. Let's go. Oh. I... Wow. One more try. Nope. But this is um, this is working. So uh, let's try the next next disc. So the last game I'm gonna try is Flashback, which is another game I really enjoyed on my PC. 
play game. It finds two files. Probably need flash one. And this is um, going pretty quick. But I think it will load. Yeah, it is loading flash two now. So this is a multi file uh, image. So I think there is probably another disk somewhere here. But uh, let's wait what he says. Found not found flash three. Yeah. So this um, this device also supports multi disk images, which is really cool for a bigger games. So let me try and find disk two. Found it. Here it is. Let's insert that. See, yes, this contains flash three. Nice. Okay, it loaded the game, so we're gonna go for normal mode again. And this is working as well. Every disc that I insert just works, which is really awesome because these discs are really, really old, presumably from the mid 90s as well. So uh, I'm always surprised that they still work. Really cool intro to this game. Can we skip this? We can, but I really recommend you watch the intro. Let's try it for just a little bit. And uh, let me just uh, give it away. He's gonna knock over the cube. <laughs> yep, the cube is gone. Damn it. This looks really good. This this looks exactly how I remember. Oh, didn't mean to do that. But here is the holocube. cube. Da -da. Really, really cool game, flashback. Let me just shoot one robot before I end this. Bear with me while I go on a rampage. There he is. Yep, got him. Okay, so flashback is working as well. So now we're going to try making our own backup. The game that I have inserted right now is Another World, which is another one of my favorites from the Amiga. That's the system that I've played it on. So uh, let's grab uh, an empty disc, insert it into the device, and uh, let's format it first. 1.6 megs. So it's almost done doing the formatting now. Just a few more seconds. Okay, it says that it's done. So now let's go to the last icon, which is where we can uh, create backups. You can play the actual game right now uh, using the pass-through port, but uh, that's really useless. <laughs> um, we're gonna do a data transfer. And it can um, uh, transfer data from the cartridge to the floppy, but it can do the same the other way around as well. I'm not really sure how that would work, but I think this is how you would create a homebrew cartridge, which is really, really cool. So we're going to do this one. Um, and I think it'll probably fit on a single file. Let's call it... Um, let's just call it flash, flash B perhaps, flash, whoops, flash B. Okay, we're done, except it's now uh, checking to see if there is a disk and then it starts to make a backup from the cartridge to the disk. And this seems to be actually working. Okay, it says that it's done, but it was so quick that I, I almost find it hard to believe that it's already done backing up the entire game to my floppy. But I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to take my cartridge out and then try and load my own backup. Okay, so here is my game. And let's try and load my, my own backup. Um, it sees the file that I created, so let's try loading it now. 
and see if the game works. It's done loading, so let's go for normal mode. It works. I just pirated software, which isn't really... Oh, it's freaking out. This is freaking out. Let me try and reset. Hold on. So, I just hit the reset button. Let's try and skip this. No, this is, this is really freaking out. It seems that the system has stopped responding, so I'm going to try and make a new backup and see if I can get it working, because this is really annoying me. Okay, we're back in the system. Now let me remove the file that it created. Um, flash B. There it is. Accept. Deleting. And I know that there is an option to actually verify if a backup works. Let's, let's not be hard-headed and just try a backup first. Yeah, okay. This seems to be working. So I'm going to reset it again. And now I'm going to actually try the backup. Cartridge to disk. Single file. Um, FB. Accept. And now it's going to, going to try and make another backup. So um, we'll be right back. This still works. That's good. Now let's see if it's uh, if it can. Ah, now it works. Yeah. So I saw that there is a verify option that you can turn on. So perhaps if you turn that on and you make a backup, it's it also verifies what you have backed up. Uh, I didn't do that. So uh, my previous backup probably just screwed up. Let's just say start. So we dive straight into the action. So this is really <laughs> another very, very cool game that I have enjoyed a lot on the Amiga. So let's kill a few of those disgusting worms. No. Um, so yeah, my own, whoops, I died. <laughs> this is so cool how he falls flat to his, uh, yep, bum. <laughs> yep, press B to continue. So, um, I just made my own uh, backup. Very cool. So this works as well. So before I put this thing away, there are two more things that I want to check out. Uh, can it also make backups to a floppy disk that I formatted on my PC? Uh, 1.44 megabytes. And could we possibly rip Game Boy games? Let's try. Let's insert the floppy and try to make a backup to this. Floppy disk data transfer single file. Um, test. Let's see if it can actually read this disk and if it can write to this disk. Okay, it says that it's done um, ripping the game to uh, 1.44 megabyte MS-DOS disk. Now, we could try and play it right now. Let's try that first. Does it see? It actually does see the file. Will this work? Okay, normal mode it is. Okay, so this works. So let's now get the floppy out and put it in my PC and see what it does. Can we actually read it? So when I inserted the disk into my PC, it does actually um, show the file on the disk and it shows that the file is just over one megabytes in size, but I cannot copy the file because it gives me a CRC error. So that means that it seems to be compatible with um, the file format of uh, 
DOS computers, but um, it uses some sort of proprietary file format, which is kind of weird. I tried loading the file directly into a Super Nintendo emulator, but that didn't work as well. So if you do know how this works, please leave a comment on this video. So what if I download a ROM of a Super Nintendo game onto a DOS formatted floppy disk? Will that work in the Super Wildcard? I think I know the answer, but we're going to try anyway, because science. It does see the file, but I doubt it can read its format. Will this work? Well, this works. Okay, so you can download images from the internet, put it on a floppy and play it like this on your original Super Nintendo. Uh, I don't recommend downloading ROMs unless you own the original game and I think even then it is illegal. So I just wanted to point out that it is possible to play games like this. So the last thing that I want to try is can it rip a Game Boy game using the Super Game Boy? So let's do that right now. So I got Zelda in the Super Game Boy and let's try if we can rip this ROM. Let's call this Zelda, oh, well, whoops, Zelda, Zelda. This is actually doing something and it's a lot smaller than a super nintendo game so will this work play game it sees the game it's loading the game This almost looks like it's working, but it's not doing an awful lot. Hmm. Let me try this again. And well, this again looks promising, but this is where it where it hangs. So ah, uh, yeah, of course. So the thing is. The ROM that it's actually ripping is the ROM of the Super Game Boy itself and not the game that is inserted. So now it clearly says there is no game inserted into the Super Game Boy. So you won't be able to rip Game Boy games using this system. So this was a closer look at the Super Wildcard for the Super Nintendo, a device that lets you play and create backups from original Super Nintendo games on three and a half inch floppy disks. I hope you have enjoyed this video and for now thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time on the Retro Game Couch.